So the last couple weeks, we have been doing this series, me, myself, and iPhone. I, I think I've recapped every single week. I'm not going to recap tonight on all the different ones. But we started out with talking about screen time and how many screens we have in our life and all that stuff. And then uh, we talked about uh, the things we watch and knowing the ratings and, and being careful of what we put in, garbage in, garbage out. And then with the last two weeks, we talked about social media and guarding ourselves in social media. And so tonight is week four, or uh, sermon number four of this series. And the title is, Where Do We Go From Here? Where do we go from here, right? Because we've talked about all these things, but how do we now take these things and move them forward? How do we take them and apply them a little bit more? And how do we take them and now go uh, take the Bible principles that we've learned and do with them what we need? And so uh, I don't know about you, but several years ago, cell phones were invented. <laughs> And now you guys all have what we consider smartphones, right? I don't think anybody's got a dumb phone in here. Uh, most of us have smartphones, right? And, and see, I was around for when we had dumb phones and when we invented into the smartphone world. Like, I'll never forget having a phone and accidentally hitting the internet button and go, no, 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 and trying to hit the end button so many times because I was afraid that I was going to get charged for going on the internet when we didn't have that service. And now it's like... It's just built into yeah. your plan. Like you don't even have to think twice about it. Uh, we, you had to used to pay 10, me 10 cents per text message, and now we don't even worry about that. They just, we just text like crazy, right? And, and so all these things. But like so many years ago, this commercial, we're about to watch a commercial called Really, and this is probably like 13 years old, right? And they were, and, but it honestly reminds me of people today more so than it does back then. And so, Kevin, will you hit the commercial for me? today than it does uh, back uh, back even 13 years ago, but apparently it was a problem. It's been a problem. Here we are 13 years later, and it's still a problem. We need that Windows 10 phone to come out again, because we need to be saved from our phones, right? The technology has just gone crazy. It has expanded. It has gone insane. Like, I, did you know that Apple came out with a drone? Did y'all know that? Not, not actually the company Apple, but they came out with drones that pick apples from an orchard. Go ahead and hit the video for me, Kevin. There's, there's now technology where these people, there's not enough workers to, to pick the apples. The difficult task is organizing the harvest. We need a large number of reliable pickers, and we have to pay wages, organize visas, housing, food, healthcare, and transportation. So 
technology has come, right? But here's the thing, and this is point number one tonight, is this. Technology makes it easier than ever to ruin or deepen relationships and reputations. Technology makes it easier now than ever to ruin or deepen our relationships and reputations, right? Technology is, is not going away. It'll, it will never go away. It is just going to get more and more and more, right? And, and so there's there's a specific scripture, and uh, it's one of those scriptures that just kind of you think about on certain times, and uh, with Mother's Day just happening, like you might think about this scripture during Mother's Day because of a mother's love, uh, but not, most of the time we think about this around Valentine's Day, but it's 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and the reason we're going to talk about this is because uh, it's important to understand God's kind of what he's trying to say about love and, and how it can ruin or deepen our relationships. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 7, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Let me say that one, one more time for the guy in the back. Or rude. That was a joke. Apparently, <laughs> everybody, nobody laughed. We'll just move on from there. Uh, <laughs> Seth's in the back, so we're saying it for Seth, apparently. Uh, it, it does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. It keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Ne love never loses faith. It always is hopeful. And it endures through every circumstance. Love, right? In the midst of technology, technology can either help us or hurt us. And so we need to remember these words that Paul writes to the Corinthians about love. Because this is what we need to take into every relationship that we have, right? Not just... Not just our, our lovey-dovey relationships, but uh, I'm talking about our friendships, our, our, our acquaintances. Like, uh, the love of Jesus should just ooze out of us. And so this is something we need to remember. Like, I've, I've heard this said one time that you need to take this and put your name in there, right? And say, like, Thomas is patient, and Thomas is kind, and Thomas is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Thomas does not demand his own way. He, uh, he's not irritable. And, and, and so you like kind of get this, and then you kind of align your life and go, does this fit? And, and if it doesn't, then okay, we've got a problem and we need to work on that. And, and if we want to deepen our relationships, if we want to deepen our reputation, then guess what? We need to be showing the love of Jesus. And it is these things. It never loses faith. It endures through every circumstance. The love of Jesus. Number two, we all get to choose. We live selfie or selfless. Okay, that's just a play on words. But we either are selfish or we're selfless, right? Uh, selfies. I mean, obviously the huge rage. Did you know that there's, if you have an Apple phone, if you go to your photos and go to your albums, there's a whole section that says how many selfies are on your phone, right? I only have 500 and something, and I started scrolling through, and probably uh, 100 of them are, are Jolie Cake, right? <laughs> Jolie loves taking selfies, right? I, half the time I've gotten to delete almost all of them because they're all blurry and crazy and up the ceiling and the floor and who knows what else. Uh, but every once in a while, she has just some really cute ones, and so I keep those. Uh, but... Uh, Selfies, right? We're all about the selfie. People are all about posting their selfie. You got like if you're gonna take the right selfie, you gotta have the right angle. You gotta have the right shadow. 
Your hair's got to be just right. You got you to gotta look just right. You got to smile just right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you got a zit, you're trying to hide it to the other side of the selfie. Like, you're going to do the sideways or something. Like, you're trying to protect the selfie, right? Uh, but the Bible wants, is very clear that we die to ourselves and we are not living our lives for us anymore, but for Jesus. And if that's the case, then we need to be selfless. We need to be self. Less In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, right before what we just read in verse 2 and 3, it says, If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and professed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it, but if I didn't love others... I would have gained nothing. It's about love. And if we're so focused on ourselves, we're not sharing the love. We're not showing anybody love. And it doesn't matter the accomplishments you have. It doesn't matter that you went to church every week. It doesn't matter that you prophesied over somebody. It doesn't matter that you spoke in tongues and got baptized in the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter that uh, you prayed and somebody got healed. It doesn't matter that you preached a sermon one time. It doesn't matter that you led somebody to Jesus. None of that matters because it says if you don't have love, you get nothing love is everything with God God says I love you while you were yet sinners right this is this is something that like I have to get sunk into my head sometimes like God loved me when I was at my worst God loved me when I was the most repulsed by him God loved me, right? And, and so how many of y'all know, Jesus help me right here. You run into Karen somewhere. Y'all know who Karen is, right? You run into Karen and she pushes every button in your life. Like you're about to lose salvation in a minute and Karen is about to get a whole dose of something. And it ain't the Holy Ghost. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And I have to remember in that moment, and it's not always easy, but I have to remember that Karen is loved by God. That Karen was chosen by God. That Karen was created in the image of God. And if I forget that, guess what? I become selfish. And I can ruin the love. God calls us to love. God calls us to live selfless. God calls us to deepen our relationships and our reputation. And that is through love. Pastor Thomas, I thought we were talking about technology. How, how can we talk about love here? Because it, it, love needs to penetrate into everything we do. Love should be in every post, in every text message, in, in every comment. Love should be the forefront. Love should be the thing that does. Can I tell y'all how many comments on things that I have typed out? How many text messages I have typed out and gotten ready? And I'm ready to hit post. I'm ready to hit send. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit goes, hey, me, uh, is that actually really smart? Mm. You're right. Right? And I just backspace it all, right? Or cancel and discard and there went all that five minutes of typing out this huge long thing, right? And, and I'm, I'm like, you know what? You're right, God. I don't need to post that. I, it just, here, I type it and I give it to you, right? Uh, and we have to remember that because it is what we're called to be, which is selfless and to focus on the Lord. Number three tonight is this. There's power in community to help navigate the online and offline worlds that we live in. There is power in community to help navigate the online and offline worlds that we live in. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12 through 13, it says this, Dear brothers and sisters, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work and live peacefully with each other. 
Now, we can easily take this and say, listen, I know we can easily take this and say pastors, right? Our, our pastors. But I'm talking about, like, the people in the church that love you. I'm talking about not just the pastors, but maybe other people that have surrounded themselves, that have built relationship with you in the church. Your parents. Uh, all these different people that are that can be in your community. Some of your friends that are good influences. Like, it, it's saying, listen. Honor them who are doing the Lord's work. They're working hard among you. They're giving you spiritual guidance, right? Show them the great respect and wholehearted love because of that work and live peacefully with them. The Bible, like, Paul's trying to get across here, like, listen, we have to do things in love. We have to remember that in love, we're a community. We are a family, right? We put it on the wall, but it's important that this is a family because we do life together. We do life in community. We do life uh, and not by ourselves because if we do it by ourselves, we're being selfish and we need to be selfless and we need other people around us to kind of help and guide us and give us advice. You know, how many of y'all have gotten advice from somebody before? Yep. How many of y'all have gotten advice and you're like, that is terrible advice. I'm not doing a single bit of that, right? But but you, you're you nice at the end. You're like, thanks, right? You don't even want to say that's great advice. You're just like, thanks, right? But how many of y'all have gotten advice and you're like, Man, that hurt, but you're right. Y'all yeah. ever had some advice like that? Like, they, they shoot it to you straight, and you're like, ouch. You're right. Right? And it's hard to admit they're right, but you're like, because you're like, ouch. But at the same time, you're like, you know what? You're right. That's true. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, how many of y'all, in saying this, how many of y'all have seen Spider-Man? Any of the Spider-Man movies? A couple of y'all, all of them, Seth's like, all of them, bro, all of them, right? All the, how many of y'all have seen the old Spider-Mans with Tobey Maguire? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that's, that's the real Spider-Mans, all right? That's all I'm going to say, and, and then you've got, but so you've got like, like three different versions of Spider-Man, and, and, but there is a common line in every single Spider-Man movie. Does anybody know what it is? I do. Uh, I, if I started, I bet you're going to finish it. Are you ready? With great power comes, comes great responsibility. Go ahead and hit the clip for me, Kangman. Even after she was hurt, she said to me that we did the right thing. She told me it was a great power. Comes great responsibility. Wait, what? How do you know that? Uncle Ben said it. The day he died. Maybe she didn't die for nothing, Peter. Uncle Ben said these famous words with great power comes great response. You know, the Bible says something a lot like this. And I don't know, maybe Uncle Ben got it from the Bible. I can't say because uh, I don't know. I'm not Stan Lee. I didn't write the comics. But Luke chapter 12, verse 48 says something a lot like this. And it says this, but someone who, who does not know and then, and then does something wrong will be punished only lightly. When someone who has been given much, much will be required in return. And when someone has been entrusted with much, even more will be required. Spider-Man terms, with great power comes great responsibility. So like pastors and stuff like that? Leaders and pastors will be judged a little bit more harshly? That's definitely biblical. Absolutely. That's why people who want to be pastors that don't have any, have any uh, need to be a pastor, I'm like, don't do it. You judge, you're judged harder as a pastor or a teacher. The Bible says that specifically. Uh, because when great, with great power comes great responsibility. But even us as people, we, we know we're called to love. We know we have the message that can save the world. And with this great power comes a great responsibility. And that great responsibility is to show the love of Jesus whether we're online or we're offline. That means if we're at the lunch table at school, that means if we're in the car, 
that, uh, that means uh, when our parents are getting on our nerves, we still have to show the love of Jesus to them. That means uh, online when people are posting things and you want to get in there and jump in on the comments, it's not smart. Don't ruin the love of Jesus. Don't ruin your testimony. Uh, with great power comes a great responsibility that you have. We all have smartphones. We all, some of you may have iPads. You probably have a streaming service of some kind in your house. Some of you have video game consoles. Guess what? With all of those things, having, having all of these things is a very big deal. And with great power comes great responsibility. That's the last thought. Having a phone, iPad, TV, console is a very big deal. And with great power comes great responsibility. Can I just give you a word of advice? Some of you are too probably getting close to this stage, if not at this stage already. But one day your parents are not going to be there to kick you off of your screens. Yeah. They're not going to be there to limit your screen time anymore. They're not going to be there to tell you that, that, video, that you should play that video game. They're not there. They're not going to be there to tell you that show and movie uh, is appropriate to watch or inappropriate to watch. Eventually, it's going to come to a time where it is up to you. Yeah. It's up to you, your character, your faith, your choice. If that is good, if it is healthy, if it is beneficial, right? If, if having three hours on Facebook a day or three hours on Instagram or three hours on Snapchat a day is healthy, you, you might start to look at yourself and go, you know what? This may be a little bit of an addiction and I need to make some changes, right? You may find yourself playing eight hours a day on a video game and you might say, you know what? I might should probably get a real job instead of playing video games all day. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, they had all these trees, all this fruit, all this vegetation, all these things they could eat. But in the middle of the garden was the temptation, the one tree that God said don't. But yet they found themselves falling into temptation and eating. So what I'm trying to say is here, you have great power in our smartphones. Our smartphones literally have more technology in, you have more technology in this than when they first, oh well, listen, I'm a, this this controversial right here, but more technology than when they first landed on the moon, okay? Uh, I heard Pastor Brooks say one time, like, the, there was a prop number on one of the rocks or something, and so uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but I've heard some people say that that wasn't real. I, that, it's not for me to judge. I don't know. Um, I would hope they wouldn't lie to us like that. But either way, there's more technology in our smartphone than was in the technology of rockets that landed on the moon years ago. Like the, the supercomputers that used to fill a room this size, literally there's more space and memory on your phone now than there was on a room, a whole room full of computers. Isn't that crazy? See, I don't know. <laughs> Just rock. It's cheese, man. They need to be harvesting that cheese and bringing it back down. But here's the thing that I'm trying to say. We have so much power in our phones. We have so much the streaming capability. Like, we don't even have to go to movies anymore. They just stream them now, right? Like, they're like, brand new movie. Yeah, we're also going to stream it on our app. Right? And I'm like, why even go to the movie theater anymore? Yeah. Right? The new video game, you don't even have to go to GameStop anymore. You just download it. Buy and download it right then and there. Like, we are becoming accustomed to these easy lifestyles. And guess what? The easier things get, the more temptations that are out there as well. And we have to guard ourselves. You have to choose. With the great power, you also have great responsibility. And you have to choose to guard yourself. You need to not live a selfie lifestyle, but a selfless lifestyle. You have to guard your heart. Man, that's going to be a common theme across this, the whole uh, series is we have to guard our heart and what goes in because if garbage goes in, garbage goes out. Right? So I want to challenge you with one last scripture. 
And it's kind of been a, a scripture that we could literally use to summarize the whole series. And it's Psalms 19, verse 14. And it says this, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O oh Lord. Like, take a second. Do your words, do your thoughts, do they please the Lord? That's what David's saying here. Like, may the words that I use be pleasing to you. There could be another way and you know, I'm not trying to change God's word here by any means, but there could be just another way that you could think about the scripture and apply it into your own meditation or your own thought life. And it could say something like this. May the words of my texts, comments, and posts, and the meditation of my iPad and streaming be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. May the words of every text message, may the words of every comment, may the words of every single one of my posts, may the, the time that I spend on my iPad or my phone, with the time that I spend on Snapchat and Instagram, with the time that I'm on TikTok, with the time that I'm streaming on Netflix or Disney Plus or Hulu or HBO Max, with the times that I'm streaming, would they be pleasing to you, oh God? We really are called by the Lord to live a higher life because we have power through the Holy Spirit to live out the Bible, to live out the words of Jesus. And with that great power comes a great responsibility. And that means we have to live our lifestyle to match that. Let's pray. Father, thank you tonight, God. As we wrap up this series, Lord, sometimes our, our technology, sometimes our social media, sometimes the things we stream, and all the above can be very self-centered. It can be all about me. It can be all about look at me. Look at my accomplishments. Look at this. We can even use it to degrade other people. But Lord, we just read in your word where it simply says, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. Lord, we know we are called to live a higher standard. And that's not just in life, but that's also in our streaming. That's also in the things we choose to watch, the things we do, the texts we send, the comments we post, the messages that are sent, God, all of the above. And Lord, it doesn't matter what our, our history uh, looks like on our phone. It doesn't matter if we clear the history. Lord, you know our heart. You know what we've done. You know what we've seen. And Lord, the question that we may ask ourselves is, is it pleasing to you? Is it pleasing to you? And so Lord, as we take a few moments to really reflect on that scripture, would you begin to minister in this place? Minister in our hearts, minister in our minds. And Lord, would you just begin to move in a mighty way? Would you reveal some stuff to us, God? There may be things that we didn't even remember, we don't remember. But Lord, would you bring it to our memory? Would you begin to deal with us on these things? So Lord, we put the rest of this service in your hands and just ask for your presence to move in our lives. In Jesus' name.